Welcome to our time of our Good Friday prayers, our Good Friday meditation. A peaceful time, a quiet time to ponder and to consider who we are as God's children and what God is doing on this God's Friday. We who are both saints and sinners kneel before the cross this day and hear it speaking to us as both verdict and promise. It is true each one of us is guilty of our participation in the world's suffering. We each, bearing the image and likeness of God in our very skin, do not respect that image in one another. We do not respect God's creations, one another, or the world we live in. We must admit this or there is no need for salvation that Christ brings. We must admit we are in bondage to these patterns of hurt before we can be liberated from them. That is the promise of Good Friday. We will be liberated from these crosses, the ones we hang on and the ones on which we hang one another. These crosses at once, symbols of the division between us and a symbol of the end to all divisions, promise that God will not abandon us in our suffering. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather this Good Friday in the shadow of the foot of the cross. Look with mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross. Now touch us with your spirit that we may be both forgiven and forgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is written in Luke chapter 23 that then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But the crowd was insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. Now when Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he'd been wanting to see him for a long time. Herod had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt, and they mocked him. They put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and, Be and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and he said to them, you brought me this man as one who is perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence. I have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him, neither has Herod, for Herod sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will, therefore, have him flogged and release him. But then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! Now this was a man who had been put in prison for insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. Therefore I will have him flogged and release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave this verdict that their demand should be granted. 
He released the man they asked for, the one who had been in per put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him. They made him carry it behind Jesus. Now a great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that have never borne and the breasts that have never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to, to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Here ends the reading. Join now in a moment of confession as we have arrived at the cross. We know Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so we ask that you would forgive us, Lord, for our unforgiving hearts, for the grudges we carry, for our cruel words, for our own lack of kindness and compassion. Jesus said to the one who was next to him, Truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. And so we pray, forgive us, Lord, for seeking the things this world offers, for building our own kingdoms, for our materialism, for our misplaced private priorities, and for neglecting the things that endure and the kingdom you came to bestow. Jesus looked from the cross and said, Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. Forgive us, Lord, for neglecting those who are in need, for ignoring the poor and the helpless and the hurting, for scorning your call to be servants. For this is why we are here, Lord God, for only here in this place of turmoil, sorrow, and death can we find peace and joy in life. Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. And as the moments progressed, Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In our prayers too, Lord, we ask that you forgive us for the times we have turned our backs on your word. The times when we have gone through trial and have suspected that you were not there. The times when we were not there to help and comfort those in need. And as the moments wore on, Jesus said, I thirst. We ask your forgiveness when we have not thirsted for righteousness and peace and hope and joy and kindness. And we have neglected the fruitful life the Spirit would bestow. As Jesus cried out, it is finished. Forgive us, Lord, when we have doubted your grace and have tried to add to our salvation by depending on ourselves and what we can do to gain your favor. And finally, Jesus offered up to God by saying, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Finally, we ask, forgive us, Lord, for not commending our past failures to your mercy and our present situations to your governess and our futures to your care.
In Luke 23, the account continues. As Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And as they cast lots to divide his clothing, as the people stood by watching, the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. Lord, as we hear these words, our hearts are heavy. As Christ died for our sins, we watch with horror, seeing, seeing him hang on the cross. We now see and recognize the evil in the world that is around him. But we too have denied our Lord. Even as he has died for our sins, we too have betrayed our Lord. We ask forgiveness. Our sins are many. For as Christ became obedient unto death, even death on the cross, we know that by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. We each have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer each of us who live, but Christ who lives in us. In the life we now live, we live in the name of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. And so we pray. Heavenly Father, as Jesus showed us how life is to be lived, it is to be filled with love and caring. As we promise and ponder your love. May it rub off on us. May there be a quality in our love, a quality that is marked by care for one another in our home, in our family, in the church, in the community, and in your creation. Increase our love and deepen our love, for we marvel at how your love reached out to a dying thief, how his life was changed and restored in that encounter Draw us to you. Let us be warmed by your presence. Point our lives toward paradise. We earnestly pray. Amen. Now in John chapter 19, we hear when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, the tunic that was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. For this was to fulfill what scripture says. They divided my clothes among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. We pray, O oh Lord, our Lord, you have experienced thirst and hunger, pain and death for us. You've died that we might live. You've suffered that we might be forgiven. Humbly, we thank you. We know that you will rise again that we might have eternal life. Now make us strong in our faith secure in our hope that we might die to rise again with you. Amen. And again from Luke 23, one of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? 
And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the Lord bless us and keep us, make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace this night and in all the days and nights to come. Amen.